champion, a former U.S. Open semi-finalist, Carlos Moya, in the Lavazza tank. Carlos, thanks for, for joining us today. It's a pleasure. We got some fantastic Lavazza coffee here. How do you how do you typically like it? Iced, hot? What's your what's your preference? I like espresso. Espresso? Sometimes okay. macchiato. Sometimes okay. espresso. Sometimes double shot. Okay. So it depends on the mood. You get you want cream, sugar, or you? No, no, just. Plain. Just plain. Yeah. Okay, single or, or double shot. So, depends on the day, on the day, on the moment. Uh, most of the time, single. Sometimes double. What's the the most number of espresso shots you've had in a day? I don't used to have more than four or five. Four or five. Yeah. So that Max, is that before yeah. going on the court or? No, no. I mean, it depends on the day. If okay. I have a lot of time, you don't have that much you, time. So it depends. You one of those people that can drink it at any time of yeah. the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, really? even after dinner, yeah. Really? Yeah. Doesn't yeah, affect you? No, I can sleep okay. <laughs> hey, you're a warrior. So you're a, you're a former U.S. Open semi-finalist. Uh, what's so special about coming out here to the National Tennis Center, Arthur Ashe Stadium, playing in front of the New York fans? What are some of your greatest memories from being out here at the Open? Well, first, it's a slam, which is uh, one of the top four tournaments uh, of the year. And then New York is special, it's uh, uh, chaos everywhere, it's uh, loud noise, uh, but it's special. So the, the atmosphere when you play a, a night match on, on Ash Stadium is, is something that you are not going to experience anywhere else. How tough is it as a player to string together seven matches in a slam, best out of five against the best players in the world, the pressure of the Grand Slam? From your experience, how tough is that to do and what advice have you given Rafa about that process. Obviously, he's a 17-time champion, yeah. but, but what have you told him about <laughs> that process? I mean, uh, as you said, he, he's a 17 times Grand Slam champion, so uh, there is not much advice that I can give him. Sometimes, uh, uh, yeah, to try to not to spend too much time on court is like a marathon, and, and you have to try to get to the last stage of the tournament. Uh, Fresh, uh, try not to play a lot of five set matches. Sometimes you cannot avoid that. I mean, so it's, it's about getting fresh to the last, uh, fresh to the last uh, matches of the tournament. You're a 1998 Grand Slam champion of the French. How difficult is the experience coming in in 1999? You're the defending champion. You have a slam under your belt. There's the pressure on you of trying to repeat. Is that a different experience altogether? Or is it just another Grand Slam, another match, another another tournament? No, it's different. If you have won only one, uh, there's only one time that that happens. That's, with Rafa, it's different. He's been seven times defending champion, so he's uh, he's used to that. Uh, but it's different situation, and also it depends how how the year has uh, has gone until you get to that tournament. Like when I played in Paris '99, Roland Garros, the year was not so good. So that's even extra pressure because you have a lot of points to defend and and your year was not as good as, as you thought was going to be. So you try to win the first couple of matches uh, fast and easy. Do you think he feels any additional pressure? Obviously, he's used to being the defending champ of the French, but now coming here as the US Open defending champ, he's got three of them. But do you think he feels any different pressure? Is it a different experience? Being the defending champion, I mean, his year has been excellent so far. So I don't think there is an extra pressure because he's the defending champion. He just has the pressure of, of uh, trying to win it, trying to finish the year as a number one in the world. So, so that those two things are already putting some pressure on on any player. What was it like for you to reach the pinnacle of your sport to be the number one player in the world? When you first reached that milestone, what was that like for you? Well, it was like a dream I had as a child coming true, and I was the first Spanish ever to achieve that. And, and you know, it was some extra extra pressure as well. Because I knew I was not going to have many chances to to become number one in the world, and uh, the first time I had the chance, I, I I took it. So compared to winning a slam, it is a bit different. Winning a slam is about having two great weeks. I mean, you have to be one of the top players and be lucky to have two great weeks. Being number one in the world is about uh, being 52 weeks, uh, the more consistent player out there, and uh, yeah, that was a dream come true. No. You and Rafa, of course, know each other well. You played Davis Cup ties together. You're very familiar with his game even before now being part of his team and, and, and as his coach. What was the very first piece of advice that you gave Rafa when you first came on board? Well, we had a long conversation before before I joined the team because I wanted to 
to see how he was feeling, uh, what were his expectations. He was having a couple of uh, bad years, uh, 2015 and 2016. I wanted him to uh, to be back at his best level, but I needed him to to tell me if he was ready to to work hard. To, to he was motivated to try to be at his best again. And uh, that was not an advice. It was just a single conversation with him. Easy, very friendly, uh, but it was very important for me to know uh, what he wanted to do, what, what, what he wanted from me, and uh, yeah, uh, it's not an advice, but it was a conversation that was really good for me. So there was a time in tennis when the age of 30 was your past your prime, yeah. and early 30s or mid 30s was nearly unheard of in terms of players regularly winning Grand Slam titles. What is it about Roger and Rafa and Novak moving into their 30s, Roger obviously in his latter 30s, that has allowed them to sustain such greatness over that period of time? Well, first, they are two or three of, together with Djokovic, the greatest players ever. So as long as they are motivated, as long as they are healthy, they are going to be there forever. <laughs> Not forever, but many years. And second, I think, is uh, where all the sports are headed. Uh, when I was playing, I was 30 years old, 31, and I was already old. Now, not only them, it's about many players, they, they get to their best level when they are over 30 years old. doesn't mean that they are winning, but they are reaching their top level when they are over 30 years old. And, and that probably prevention, uh, nutrition, uh, uh, so many things now are happening that uh, are allowing these players to, to perform well at this, at this stage of of their career. Also the young generation they looks like they are not ready yet to to step up but uh, sooner or later that's gonna happen and now we have to try to enjoy these uh, great players and because this is not gonna last forever. Now you obviously an exceptional player coach and are doing great work with the Nadal Academy as well. What, what's a piece of advice that you would give to some young tennis players out there watching at home that maybe want to follow in the footsteps of, of yourself or Rafa? I have to say that it's, it's easier to be a good coach with such, <laughs> with such a good player. But yeah, I'm also spending my time, enjoying my time with the, with the academy, try to enjoy the young uh, kids that uh, are starting, uh, are looking at Rafa, well, the way he's practicing. I know it's going to be difficult to have another Rafael Nadal, but at least to try to uh, to enjoy their time when they are on court, to work hard if they want to become a, a tennis player, try to uh, keep fighting for that dream. Uh, if I've been a tennis player, if Rafa has been a tennis player, it's because that can happen. And try to, to keep your dreams alive and nobody has to stop you to tell you that you cannot uh, do that. So if they have that dream, go for it, fight for it, but at the same time you have to enjoy that uh, path that is getting you to to become a tennis player. As you mentioned, the first Spaniard to reach the top ranking in the world, you were a trailblazer um, in Mallorca. What do you think it was that separated yourself from all of the tennis players in the past that allowed you to be that trailblazer, to be the first? It's tough, it's tough to be the yeah. first. It's easy to be the second and the third and the fourth. Yeah, you know what, uh, I've been asked that question what, what, when I was 12, 14, 15 years old. I was practicing the same amount of hours, same. I was doing the same drill, same everything. What was the difference? Why did you get there and why the others not? I don't know. Honestly, I, 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 have, I think there have to be a mix of, of so many things together that uh, allows you to, to become a tennis player. And then once I was uh, at the top 10, there were, were few that were fighting to become number one in the world. Why did I get it? I don't know, because the other guys, they wanted to become number one. They were very good players. I don't know why, why it's happening. I mean, you have to... I have been always very positive and very optimistic uh, in everything. Uh, realistic, but uh, try to think positive. I think when you think positive and you're optimistic, you, you attract that and good things happen. So probably that was together with uh, probably the ability I had when I was on court and to play tennis to try to improve. Probably being positive helped me to to believe that I could get there. Carlos, how was your coffee? It was excellent. It was excellent. Yeah, very good. Carlos very good. Moya, trailblazer, former number one player in the world, a Grand Slam champion now, coach to the world number one, Rafael Nadal. Thanks for coming out and joining us. Thank you. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank Appreciate you. it.